Today being the first day of the week, and we had our little sacred assembly, a gathering of believers, and uh, and I set forth Psalm 47 by way of just going through all the Psalms the, uh, with the express purpose of setting forth Christ and Him crucified as the main subject matter of the sacred Psalter in the Bible, and uh, by way of exposition. And I was impressed myself as I was going through, and it wasn't very deep, but, you know, simple exposition of Psalm 47, which we will uh, read together shortly, that I was impressed that um, by the fact that the Christian or Christological exposition of the Psalms is the only way of reading them responsibly and even rationally. You know, otherwise uh, you run into all sorts of problems. And this particular psalm is a good example. It's just a perfect instance of how Christ ties up everything together. Everything uh, really begins to make sense. Otherwise, if you take Christ out of the picture and you just look at it as a, as a piece of Jewish uh, poetry or you know, whatever history, uh, some sentiments, uh, experiences, it becomes almost unintelligible. Let me um, illustrate what I mean. Let's read the psalm and then I'll, I'll show you some points. Okay, Psalm 47. It says, Oh, clap your hands, all ye people, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. For the Lord most high is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellence of Jacob, whom he loved, Selah. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises unto our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. God reigneth o'er the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. Okay, so the first problem that you run into when reading this psalm is the first line, the very first verse says, Oh, clap your hands, all ye people, or all ye nations. In point of fact, it's not just the people as they just, the plural. The word in the original suggests nations or goyim, non-Jewish nations, heathen in point of fact. So, and it says it addresses them, all ye nations, which means uh, like people like myself and you, you know, Americans, Russians, uh, and people who are far off, who are not part of the ethnic uh, desc descendancy of Abraham. It says, oh, clap your hands, all ye peoples, all ye nations, clap your hands, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. So the exhortation is to be joyful to the nations, to clap their hands, to be just rejoicing. And what is the why? What is the motivation? It says, for the Lord, i.e., the you know, with a capital L, capital O-R-D, which means the Jehovah, most high is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. Now, the fact that, that God reigns supreme uh, in, and, uh, in and of itself the understanding the, of, of the supreme governance of God, that he's the most high, that he ruleth over all things and so forth. It is an imposing thought, but it's not necessarily an occasion for joy, especially for the goyim, for the pagans. I mean, after all, God is the God of Israel. He is in that holy place and the, the, the nation. So why should they be rejoicing? Do you get what I'm, the, the drift, uh, what I'm driving at? That without Christ the, in the gospel message, it's, it's no consolation. It's certainly no motivation, especially for those who are far off. 
in that the Lord Most High is terrible. He's a great king over all the earth. And then verse 3. Note verse 3. It especially is problematic if you read it with Jewish spectacle glasses, as it were, without Christ. Just leaving it. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. So this is kind of a Jewish address in and of itself. So, so there's distinction. All ye peoples, nations, you clap your hands, be rejoicing, uh, be, you know, exuberant and so forth with joy. Because the Lord is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. All right. And... He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. So they will be subdued, conquered. Now tell me, um, if you're conquered, if you're taken over by some other nation, in, in this instance, if it's just the Jewish uh, expansion or Zionism, would the, would, would the pagans or heathen, uh, Gentiles, Goyim, why would they be rejoicing and clapping their hands that the Jews are actually taken over? Okay? You see what I'm saying? So this is not a physical dominance. This is not Zionism in point of fact. I mean, ask Palestinians, the Palestinian Arabs. Are they rejoicing over the fact that the Jews are taking the land, whether or not their claims are justified? That's a... That's another story, maybe partly so, but, uh, you know, if you ask the Palestinians, certainly they're not rejoicing over the fact that, the, uh, that uh, they have the settlers and, and so forth, and they're kind of pushing the Palestinian Arabs uh, from where they used to live. So the point of the, where, when uh, you basically conquering lands, if it's just a physical warfare no one's going to be rejoicing over the fact that you're taking their land and depriving of uh, the nations of their sovereignty and so forth so that kind of gives you some some clue that this psalm just as all the rest of scripture makes sense in christ who is the light who is the center who holds the keys who enlighteneth every man who cometh into the world. He is that logic, that logos, who gives us understanding, as his uh, title, Logos, suggests. And by the way, the very title I should have maybe mentioned in passing, the uh, heading of the psalm says to the chief musician, a psalm for the sons of Korah. Now, the Greek translation, well, it's basic, it's it actually, it's, by the sons of Korah, okay? But it's interesting that the Greek uh, translation, Septuagint or LXX, says that through the sons of Korah, a psalm. Again, indicating that there's only one author of every scripture in the Bible. And that author is none other but the Holy Ghost of God. God is the author, is the only real author of all books for no prophecy uh, came by the will of man saith peter but the holy man of god spake or wrote as they were moved by the holy ghost so the sons of korah were penning down this prophecy but it was through the sons of korah they were not uh, actual authors it's just the the full inspiration is, is of course, uh, supported and confessed here. So, but uh, he proceeds. Um, so the Gentiles are supposed to be rejoicing over the fact that God will, the Lord, our God, shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. Again, if it's just, you know, it's the physical warfare, no one's going to be rejoicing over that fact. So, aha, uh -huh, you're thinking... What is the great conquest that is being accomplished? That the one who's uh, conquering and to conquer going forth. It is this message of the gospel of the victorious king, Christ, who is bringing about the obedience of faith. So it is the evangelical message 
that is subduing the nations and even the enemies under the Christ's feet. And that brings joy that even those who are living afar off or on the islands, those who are nothings of the earth, formerly not a nation, but now the people of God, the royal priesthood and so forth, they are now rejoicing with the people of God. Okay, it's not the physical conquest. 